Hello everyone, I'm Niklas Penzel and today I will be presenting work to you I did together with Christian Reimers, Clemens Alexander Brust and Joachim Denzler at the Computer Vision Group in Jena. In our work we theoretically analyze the statistical estimators, uncertainty sampling introduces into an active learning system and find that it is inconsistent or can become inconsistent under certain conditions. Hence we argue that you should be careful when to employ uncertainty sampling. Before I will start with our uh, to show you our analysis, I will first introduce the active learning cycle and talk a little bit about uncertainty sampling. So let's get started. Active learning is basically a cycle. We start with an initial dataset and use this dataset to train a model. This model is now our best representation about the underlying problem our dataset poses. Hence we use this model and some kind of query strategy to select unlabeled data points. We give these unlabeled data points to an expert who then annotates them for us. This is quite expensive and often is it, it is unfeasible to label all data points, which is also the reason why we actually do active learning. We use these annotated data points to update our dataset and train a new and hopefully improved model. We can repeat the cycle multiple times until either our query budget is reached or our classifier uh, performs well enough in a certain metric. This in the end results in an improved model. The interesting question now is the query strategy, and there are multiple different query strategies. In this work, we will focus on uncertainty sampling. I will introduce uncertainty sampling using this simple example of docs versus cupcakes. As you can see, we have two classes, docs and cupcakes, and we have some labeled images of both classes. We use these images to learn the decision boundary displayed as the uh, black linear function. Uncertainty sampling would now select data points where we are most uncertain about. In this case, these data points are the two data points closest to the decision boundary. As you can see, both data points are wrongly classified, and if one of them is labeled or both of them is labeled, we hopefully improve our classifier and in the end have a better model. Let's now talk about the actual example we analyzed in our work. In our theoretical work, we focus on the one-dimensional binary case. Let's assume you have some kind of latent distribution, which is composed of two class distributions. We now want to learn some kind of threshold to decide if an example was drawn from class distribution 1 or class distribution 2. There are multiple ways to go, uh, like to estimate such a threshold, for example, linear discriminant analysis or logistic regression. But we use the following assumptions to derive our model. We assume that both classes are modeled by Gaussians and that both classes are equally likely and share variance sigma squared. This leads us to the following statistical estimators that are our model. We have two mean estimators, one for each class, which is basically the arithmetic mean of uh, all points drawn from this class, which is also the maximum likelihood estimators of Gaussians. And we have the estimator for the decision boundary, which given our assumptions is just the middle point between both estimates of the means in a certain time step. In a certain time step, we now select some example, add it to either of the two classes, and then use our estimators again to update our model. I will now make this even more clear by showing uh, what random sampling and uncertainty sampling using this model look like. Let us start with the example of random sampling. On the left-hand side, you can see that in this example, the latent distribution is also just a mixture of Gaussians. On the right-hand side, you can see our initial estimate in time step zero, using the three data points we sampled from each class. In future time steps, we see that our model converges or like gets closer and closer to the actual latent decision boundary. This happens because the uh, estimators we use, the uh, maximum likelihood estimators of the means of a Gaussian, are consistent and stochastically converged for t towards infinity to the optimum parameter, at least if the examples are drawn iid, which is the case in random sampling. We will now use the same example, but perform uncertainty sampling instead, meaning that in each step we uh, select the latest estimate of the decision boundary and label it according to the latent distribution at exactly this point. For growing time steps, you can see that the variance of our estimated Gaussian gets smaller and smaller. This happens because the point we add to either of our two classes is always exactly in the middle of our two means. You can also see in this example that the mean estimate for the for class one is larger or grows larger than the optimum latent decision boundary of zero. This means that we can never for future time steps again reach the optimum decision boundary because the interval defined by our two means only grows smaller and never grows larger again. For theoretical proof of this convergence, I will refer you to our paper.
We are now interested in how likely such an event occurs. In other words, how likely is it that the optimum decision boundary can never be reached again, meaning that our active learning system is inconsistent. Towards this goal, we analyze the empirical probability that such an event occurs. Looking at different parameter configurations with varying class region overlaps, we can see that the probability that the optimum decision boundary is still achievable in time step t plummets for later time steps. We can also see that a higher class region overlap, meaning larger variance, increases uh, the speed of convergence. Looking now at different uh, parameter configurations with approximately the same overlap, we can see that the overlap actually defines the curse of this probability. In the end, we see that uh, it is for later time step quite unlikely that the optimum decision boundary is still achievable. To further analyze and compare the performance of uncertainty sampling versus random sampling, we look at the empirical variance of the decision boundary estimator. A smaller variance means on average better estimates. In the case of overlapping class regions, we can see that random sampling converges towards zero because it is consistent and for t towards infinity, we actually learn the optimum decision boundary, stochastically speaking. Uncertainty sampling in this case in the first time steps converges faster but towards a higher variance, meaning that in the end, after a certain amount of time steps, we get worse estimates. In the case of separate class regions, we can see that random sampling uh, converges equally fast as in the overlapping class regions case, but uncertainty sampling converges way faster and also towards zero variance, meaning that depending on the class regions, uncertainty sampling can outperform random sampling. I will conclude with the two key main takeaways of our work. The first is that uncertainty sampling depends highly on the latent class regions. To be more specific, it actually depends on the overlap of the latent class regions, meaning that the overlap defines or determines if uncertainty sampling can outperform random sampling or if random sampling is the better choice. I hope in, in the future you are careful when to choose uncertainty sampling. For more the theoretic work, I will refer you to our paper, and now I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you for your attention.